Hello, everyone. I was going to attempt to do my introduction in Spanish, but in the fact that it's so close to lunch, I did not want to give you everyone a stomach ache, so I won't attempt that. <laughs> okay. What I want to talk about today is uh, the drilling contract, the ecosystem, whether it's healthy or hurting. Um, my background is the SVP of water and minerals. I have pretty much a global perspective of what's going on in the market. Uh, and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I see going on and how it really ties together with what we need to do as an industry going forward and thinking about how we prepare for the recovery as it starts to basically embark upon us now. Uh, like many of you, I'm a geologist. My background's mostly in water and in environmental issues. And I've spent uh, the last probably seven or eight years working in the mining space as well. Uh, I think it's extremely important how we look at things and what we do to, to make sure we move things forward in terms of working together to solve problems. Uh, I really want to thank Doug and the Discoveries Conference for inviting me to talk. Uh, we've been a longtime supporter of Doug and what the MMC is doing. I think it's a great way to bring people together and network them. Uh, it's, it's certainly great to see the attendance that's here this year compared to last year. And the, the conference is growing in importance and responsibility. Uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to thank my team from Lane to Mexico. Uh, they do a great job. We're very proud of them and what they accomplish. Um, so with that, I'm going to move on to the topic, and I really want to challenge you to think a bit. And I picked um, the topic, and everybody's probably wondering, why do I call it an ecosystem? And I actually look at it and think about an ecosystem as the way the industry works, is we're in a situation where we're all interdependent upon each other. And when you look at the definition of an ecosystem, it's a group of organisms or entities or companies that work and interact together and also interact with their environment. So we all work together, miners, drilling contractors, suppliers, in, ad in addition to the fact that we're working with a macro environment, much out of our control in terms of what the price of gold is going to do or the, or the strength of the dollar, et cetera. So I want to share that with you. And, and when you think about an ecosystem, probably the best one to think about is a situation when you look at coral reefs. Coral reefs are, are a very complex ecosystem where many different species of fish, et cetera, are living together, all thriving, working in an environment. But uh, as, I don't know if any of you looked lately, but there's a lot of problems going on with the coral reefs, and I've been writing about it on LinkedIn, is that global change is act or climate change is actually causing the reefs to go under a lot of stress, and there's been mass bleaching events that have actually caused the reefs to go into to, to shock. And you've seen the fact that one species can suffer everybody suffers and they all go. And so that's sort of the theme of where I came from for this. And again, I pose the question too, is this whether it's healthy or hurting, because I see a lot of parallels to what's going on with our industry. Are we in the right position at the right time, et cetera? How are we gonna do? Uh, there's been three downturns now in the last 20 years. There's segments of the population that are, you know, from an age perspective, that are no longer part of the industry. They've moved on to other careers. How do we think about that as we move forward in, ter in terms of building the organizations back? Uh, so what I'd like to do right now is take and uh, look and talk about this as we go forward. <clears throat> First, I want to start, and by the way, I've done my slides in bilingual because I thought it would be the smart thing to do. Please don't ask me to read them because it would be very, very hard. Um, anyway, what do drilling contractors do? Our job is to really be, provide that on-demand expertise to you folks as miners. Uh, none of you really want to own drills and have the heart, heartburn and headaches that go with them. Leave that to us. We're the ones that are financially motivated to look and figure out how to do things better. We want to innovate. We want to increase our performance and capabilities so we can do more from you. Uh, it's only five decades ago that wireline coring was developed and actually took it from being a very shallow drilling program to the ability to go down to 2,000 meters or more now. Uh, and we want a lower cost because what matters to us is we want to increase and maximize the value to you folks. Um, value is a simple statement of quality over price. If you look at just at price, you're not getting the whole thing. It's really about looking at quality over price. Uh, and here's, here's sort of my depiction and visualization of what the ecosystem looks like. I, I actually built it and looked at it and thought of it as like a transmission. Every one of these gears depends upon the other gear to, to, to actually make things happen. So on the left-hand side, you see the miners in the middle of the drilling contractor. And then the things that matter to us that we have to leverage the most, it's labor, consumables, and capital equipment. And we have to make decisions all the time as to what's the best way to spend the money to make sure that we provide the maximum value to you. And you can see the amount of services there that matter. But we're just all linked together, and one gear cannot turn without the other. So we need to all work together and figure out how we do that. Now, clearly, we've gone through a, uh, everybody can remember these slides and where we were in 2012 and how life was really, really good and we thought it would never end. 
Well, we spent five years going in the wrong direction, and we've all paid the, the pain of going through that. Uh, it's, it's, it's really changed the market when you look at it. The juniors who were very, very aggressive and, and very vocal in the marketplace and actually were the marginal consumers of drills have actually been you know, hurt quite badly with the, with the downturn. And likewise, the mi major miners had to focus on cost cutting. And so now you look at that five-year secular downturn, and what, what, what basically has come from that is we've seen exploration budgets get slashed. We've seen contracts being renegotiated continuously because prices have come down. It's not fun for the drilling contractors, but we know and see it as a necessity as to what goes on in the marketplace. Uh, we're, the, the one thing that kind of concerns me the most is that drilling decisions are now being made by the finance and contract people as opposed to the technical folks who are looking and working on the projects. And when it becomes a paper exercise of trying to decide on a contractor based upon paper versus upon what you actually see for results, that becomes a problem. And I think that's something the in industry needs to look at and focus on. And we've seen price take and become the major dominant decision uh, over safety, technical performance, and other factors. So I think price has become too much of a, a fact, and, and I think it's going to hurt us in the long term. I think we really need to move to a situation about looking at value. I think everybody's seen this slide from SNL, and this is the CapEx spend over the last 15 years. And we can all see the peak at 2012 and what's happened, and we've come down. It's come down about 67%, which is a long way. The question is now whether we're at the bottom or not. And I think amongst the sentiment that I hear from you folks and going to PDAC and other conferences, we think we're at the bottom and things are going to get better. The question is how fast does it get better and what does it mean to all of us? And I think some of the talks this morning have been really helpful to think about that in terms of the financing, John was talking about it from River Resources, about Mexico's sort of behind the curve in terms of getting money brought into the country to, to make things happen. We certainly would like to see it. I know in a bunch of our other jurisdictions that we're working in, there's a lot of money flooding in to make things happen. So it feels like we're coming off the bottom, and uh, there's a lot left to be done. Uh, what I've included a slide here is uh, I, I typically track the top four publicly held drilling companies just to see what's going on. And you can see the curve on the left-hand side of this chart. Basically, it's the, the, the change in revenue over the last five years. And you can see pretty much everybody's tracking together, and it's down about 60 70%, much like the CapEx spend slide that I just showed you. And you can look at uh, the bottom right. I got a picture there of basically uh, everybody's basically cash positions or debt positions, and then for the last four quarters, how much EBITDA they generated. And you can see pretty much the publicly held drilling companies aren't doing really, really well. And there's a lot of news that comes out on a probably a weekly or biweekly basis about various companies doing whatever. Um, that's what happens in a downturn. How we come out of it, it matters. And what that downturn has done is put everybody in a survival mode. And everybody's hung on for five years and figured out how we're going to get through the downturn uh, because brighter days do come back. So we've all reduced our staff. Um, we've maintained our, our core people, you know, that's the most important thing of all. Our industry is all about people. If you don't have good people, you don't have anything. We can all write checks for equipment. It's having people that matters the most. Um, so we're, we're looking at a situation where we've got low utilization on the, on the capital equipment that we do have and a situation with minimal investment in terms of new equipment at this time because pretty much everybody's in survival mode. As you look forward and think about this, and what's the threat to the, the further survival of the companies, it really comes down to is uncertainty in contracts. You know, years ago, we would sign up and have contracts that would be tens of thousands of meters, long duration contracts, et cetera. Right now, and we understand it, the market's not in that position. Most of the contracts are short because money's tight with everybody and we're doing that. I think as it matters as the market comes back, we need to move to that situation of putting certainty in, in front of the drilling contractors because we're going to be required to make significant investments. It's hard to make an investment with uncertainty laying, laying in front of you. And then low prices, are, you know, clearly we're in a situation with an oversupplied market. We get it. Uh, we need to work through that. When, when, it, when the market does turn and go, we want to also make sure that that ecosystem is healthy and ready to respond back to that. And clearly in Mexico, we've had a problem with, uh, you know, obviously I'm from the United States and Donald Trump has made a lot of noise. A lot of it is probably going to be just noise, but it certainly hurt the peso in terms of what's going on. And the peso is actually, you know, healing back now, which is really, really good to see. But we want to be in a situation where a stable peso environment uh, and a stable exploration environment would be really helpful. 
What are we going to see in the implications for the recovery? I mentioned it earlier, it's going to be a shortage of experienced labor. We've had many people who have left the industry. We're also facing a situation where we have a new generation coming along, the millennials, which they really don't get what we do. They grew up with the computers and they're Google people. They like the computers and doing all that, and they don't really like the, the hardship of working away from home for extended periods of time. They'd rather be home and have their careers. Uh, and you know the amount of time and effort it takes all of us to train people up to make sure they're safe to go to the field is considerable. So when this re recovery reco uh, comes back, a lot of people who have left the industry probably won't come back. We've got to start to build again from, from scratch. Uh, on the inventory and the supply chain and the infrastructure, again, the same thing. We've made sure that we've done everything to contain our spending. Uh, our vendors have done the same. They've reduced their inventory. And we're in a situation where that supply chain is going to struggle. Oops. It's going to struggle. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, the supply chain is going to struggle to keep up with us because as this thing starts to recover, it's going to be hard. And we're, right now, we're already starting to see prices for some consumables start to increase. So as the market starts to heal, everybody's going to rush into a situation that's already in stress. How do we work to solve this together? <clears throat> we focus on creating value. And it's really important for us to have these steps together to work on how we build and benefit from the healthy ecosystem. So I, I, I think start with value. I think we ought to be in a situation where we pre-qualify and streamline the bidding process. It should be make, make it easier for everybody to do work with each other. I think it would be smart for the miners to come out and have office and rig visits and see what you're actually going to hire, talk to clients, get references, go out and meet the crews, et cetera, versus doing a paper study. Because paper studies really don't serve people well. And I think everybody can attest there's been programs where people have gone out and drilled and not had the results they wanted, and essentially that money's been wasted. So we need to get in a situation where everybody works on this to solve the problem. Uh, and I think it's really important to involve the contractors early in the planning process for suggestions on how to improve value. It might be moving the pads to a different location or whatever. However we can look at it to say we want to take exploration dollars and spend them wisely. So however we work together to help each other, we're all in to do that. Uh, I think it's also important that the technical teams be put on an equal footing with procurement. You folks as explorationists and geologists, et cetera, you're the ones that are at the drills all the time. Somebody in procurement or in count accounting is not there. They don't see what goes on day in and day out. Your input matters. We, we value your input a lot, and we'd like to see the situation where people are engaged quite a bit. Um, so that's really, really important. Uh, and then finally, decide on best value versus lowest price. I think that's, again, the theme of where we're coming back to. When you look at this, again, think about it as a transmission. Everybody needs a healthy drilling uh, ecosystem. To, we want good, solid, fair competition for everybody. And we really want to encourage in, the investment and innovation that needs to occur to take the industry further and further along the path to make costs lower. We're here to help you. I think that's probably the most important message that I'll leave you with. And then uh, a final thought is quality is not a function of cost. It's really a symbol of what we do and the emblem of ex excellent work. Uh, you know, it guarantees customer satisfaction, and that's what brings us back to you folks more and more for, for that. And with that, I'm done, and if I can answer any questions, I'd be happy to do so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.